we will learn about the concept of defensive expenditures method is basically one of the methods using which we can find out the effect of a certain policy intervention we can try to quantify it so let's see how we can do this as the name goes it is related to something undesirable something undesirable is being avoided for that there are some expenditures that one can undertake and that will lead to the defensive expenditures we are considering an example of a smoggy city which is definitely a problem these days in many cities around the world and if there are smoggy cities uh, their uh, various buildings would have unclean windows due to the smog all those pollution and uh, contaminants in the air and that will uh, call for the defensive expenditures in, in other words, we will have to clean those windows and that will require purchase and possession of some materials and tools that will allow us to clean the windows. So that's a cost that has to be faced by the people in the smoggy cities. Now the cost of cleaning the smog is uh, in, uh, called as the defensive expenditure. There is another alternative uh, for this term. And here the uh, alternative keyword is there, the averting expenditures because we are trying to avert something undesirable. Now the amount which is spent to mitigate or eliminate the uh, undesirable situation is basically against a negative externality and we want to avoid the negative effects of that negative externality. For example, if an ordinance is passed and in that ordinance the efforts and the order is to reduce the smog in the environment then there will be cleaner windows automatically because due to some regulation some law the smog is reduced because of some um, restrictions on the people who are polluting the environment so when this happens uh, we will have cleaner windows now this ordinance this intervention by the state how we can value this now we will see that how we can value this the spending on the cleaner window cleaning will decline now because the windows are cleaner than before due to this ordinance that has reduced the smog so the reduction in this exp defensive expenditure can be considered equivalent to the benefits of this ordinance so this is a very simple way of quantifying and assessing the benefits of such ordinance. On the contrary, if some policy brings uh, increased pollution, then there will be increase in the defensive expenditures. So that's a other side of the policy. And this can be exemplified with the help of pollution heaven hypothesis or effect in which the pollution can increase in such areas where the pollution control policies are weak. So in this way, the ordinance can be assessed uh, using the defensive expenditures and their change. What happens is that the window cleaning process is the output and the inputs are the externality, which in this case is small. And the other inputs, they are there that are being used as the inputs. And uh, these are window cleaners, those tools, uh, brushes or mops or chemicals. These are the things that we can use and this basically gives rise to a production process in which we are getting cleaner windows and there are two inputs to it. Well, if we want to consider the changes in these, if the externality of the smog or any other negative externality, if it increases, it is going to require greater inputs and if it decreases, it is going to require lesser, greater inputs. So you see that in this, uh, in this way, the cleaning production will be an outcome of this uh, couple of inputs and they can balance each other in order to keep the cleaner windows at a constant level. Now we consider this diagram in which we have depicted the situation. On the x-axis we have quantity of clean windows and on y-axis we have price of the clean windows in uh, dollar and this is the demand curve for clean windows this is s naught which is the first supply curve of the clean windows it is basically the marginal cost of the cleaner windows 
and uh, there is a shift in this because of the decline in the uh, pollution and that will lead to a expansion of the supply curve of the cleaner windows and you can see that the expansion has given rise to a greater number of clean windows as compared to uh, the previous level which was Q0 now we have Q1 and due to this uh, change in equilibrium from point A to point B the price is also changed the price is now lesser because we have to spend less on cleaning the windows because of this uh, ordinance that has improved the situation by providing um, a lower cost of cleaning the windows as, as the windows are already cleaner as compared to before. So this is the change in consumer surplus that we can see here. Uh, the consumer surplus was this triangle P0, A and somewhere here D. But now this portion, this rectangle and this triangle have been added since this is the new equilibrium. And this trapezoid is actually showing the increase in the consumer surplus. That is P1, P0, A and B. And this is possible because of the uh, lesser cost of having clean windows and the greater number of uh, clean windows that are now available due to the ordinance. So this is the reduction in the defensive expenditure due to decline in the cost or the price that they have to pay. And this is the uh, change in the uh, number of clean windows that has happened due to the ordinance which is actually the uh, marginal cost of providing the cleaner windows and that has now declined. So in this way we can assess the uh, effect of the policy uh, which has actually declined the level of smog and there are positive uh, effects of that on the negative externality of the smog. Now this if, uh, method comes with some limitations that we must remember and uh, starting with the first one uh, it assumes as if uh, the changes in the new equilibrium are happening instantaneously but in real life the consumers they are not fully aware and they are not immediately informed of the changes and they are not going to take immediate actions so this is why it can take some time whereas here it was considered as if there is no time dimension or time lag involved in this process and there was a sudden shift from point A to point B. So this is one limitation. Uh, the effect can be in the form of attention because uh, if there was no smog people would not pay attention to the cleaning of the windows that much but when they see that there is smog their attention will divert towards the windows and they will start cleaning it or they will start spending more on it. So it means that this attention factor has come into play and the cleaning has now become a priority and cleaning has increased. So this factor could have been omitted in the absence of smog but smog has brought attention and it might increase the cleaner windows as a consequence. So this is not addressed in our process of analysis that we have seen above. Self cleaners, uh, they, they usually don't pay for anything because people can all clean the windows on their own and once they do, um, they might not hire someone to clean the windows. And once the ordinance has taken place, it will reduce the pollution and smog and the windows will be cleaner. So their opportunity cost, the self cleaners, their opportunity cost will now decline because the windows are not that much unclean. So that declined effort and the declined opportunity cost that they will have to uh, face will now be considered as a benefit because now they are at uh, some sort of uh, some level of convenience. But this doesn't get included in our analysis. So this can also be considered as one of the limitations. Finally, the defensive expenditures, they are undertaken on one part of the damage. And that damage 
is the unclean windows. But what if there are other uh, negative effects and negative externalities? For example, if there is smog, there will be dirtier shirts and there will be health problems relating to respiratory system. The eyes will also suffer due to the um, smog. So, if we uh, omit these externalities, definitely we will omit the defensive expenditure that we can undertake on these negative externalities. That is, we will have to spend more on cleaning the shirts or protect some jacket to cover them when we travel outside. We will have to buy masks and we would have to buy some um, glasses in order to cover our eyes when we travel outside. So these are also examples of the defensive expenditure and these should be included in our uh, analysis. So here in our analysis this was not included. So we should include these um, overlooked benefits because uh, when we reduce the negative externalities these are in other words avoided costs and hence we can call them overlooked benefits that are not included in this. So cleaner shirts due to ordinance, uh, reduced health problems due to ordinance will become some avoided costs and they are also overlooked benefits if we do not include them in our analysis. So in this way we can try to assess a policy intervention by using this method of defensive expenditures and this was the diagrammatical depiction of that. This was the concept of it, the example of a smoggy city and the effect on the unclean windows was used in order to explain this concept. So this was yet another method of quantifying a policy intervention. Thank you.